Hi guys, my name's Andrew Ogilvy and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be playing some more Pokemon Leaf Green and in the last episode, we're just going to be, t uh, well, the last episode, we're just working our way through here and uh, we're just going to be doing the exact same this episode. Hopefully we can get ourselves uh, a wee bit further up the, the floors. Um, there is a lot of battles in here. It's great for the XP and then if I feel like we're not ready to fight, um, is it Erica? I don't think it's Erica. I think Erica was a grass gym. I, uh, what's the, who's the leader? Sabrina. Sabrina. How could I forget? We sweet Sabrina. We're a wee doll, if you remember the anime. Um, if I feel like we're not uh, not enough levels to take on Sabrina, we're going to go and um, we'll do some training. I think that's probably going to be your, our best bet. Level 29. Let's go for an egg bomb. See how much an egg bomb does. Don't think it's going to do much. It'll do more than confusion right enough. And <laughs> wiped it out completely. Fantastic. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. I was, uh, I was thinking about maybe just switching out there and trying to share some XP. Um, so let's say we can't really go up there and battle anyone and over there and battle anyone. I think once you get to like the top sort of levels you're going to pick up the card key. I can't really remember. I haven't really looked into it to be honest. Because um, I don't think we're going to be at that point uh, anytime soon. Uh, there is a lot of battles in here. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of good XP to, ha uh, to be had. You can obviously you can avoid some of these. Um, but it's a walkthrough, why, why would you do that? <laughs> why, why would I do that? It's, it's one of those things, I like to like play a game and uh, try and experience the most of it. I, there is things that I have skipped out on and I probably will skip out on still, but I try to like, pick up the more important parts. Uh, a bite. I said, uh, do you know, Pain really could have been doing having like crunch or something like that. I don't think Pain learns crunch, which is a shame. Uh, I, I like bite, I like bite, it's a good move, but crunch is just like, it's bite but better. <laughs> It's not the best way to describe it, isn't it, really? <laughs> uh, in for another bite. I think you've got a chance of flinching with bite. I think that's also the case with crunch. I might be wrong. Just let me know in the comments below if you actually know. Um, but I've got a couple of things I wanted to speak about. And one of which is I've been getting into my FIFA a lot recently. I, I, I used to play FIFA a lot. Like, back 2011, 2012, 2013. Those years, like, seven, eight years ago, um, sort of when FIFA Ultimate Team was good. <laughs> it's hard to say that. Obviously, I think FIFA is one of those games that has got better gameplay over the years, but I feel like um, it comes a point where it's just not fun to play that sort of level anymore. And I mean, I played that level like two years ago. I was playing Ultimate Team and absolutely like, blasting it. Didn't spend any money. I, I try not to spend money on FIFA because I've done it when I was younger and I spent a fortune. Um, so. I always try and build up a good team, but I think like it's easier to build a good team on FIFA now, um, like nowadays than it was back then. Like back then, my best team, I don't even think I had a team of the season. And then two years ago, when I was playing Ultimate Team, uh, like properly, like uh, like getting right into it, I had a full team of team of the seasons. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's uh, it's mad how uh, limited the cards were back then, and limited edition, and everything was so expensive, and it was so hard to make money, and then all these SBCs and all things just really really helped you build a good team in the in later generations of FIFA, which is brilliant. Uh, so I, I don't know, I might, might do a series or something like that on it. I don't know, um, let me know if you want to see some FIFA content. I do play a lot of pro clubs, that was one thing I wanted to get onto. Was, um, I've been playing a lot of pro clubs recently, I've got a wee team that uh, it's just me and a couple of friends. And uh, we've, we've been we've been putting, putting the shifts in, we've been uh, spending a good few hours each night. Uh, getting ourselves up there. I think we're in Division Four now. Might be, might be four. We did. We were in Division Four before, and we got relegated to five, and then we're back up to four. We, we just, you know, you have a lull. We all play quite bad. Uh, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but you, you, there comes a point where you just play quite bad, and there's nothing that you can do. You just uh, like you can sit there and rage and and uh, keep playing, or you can just like take a break. And I think we all just sort of taking a break for a couple of days. And come back, and then we managed to get ourselves re-promoted re back up, which is brilliant. Like, I, I absolutely love FIFA. I love football. I love football managers. I love all that sort of side of things. I love uh, the technical aspects of football. I'd probably be better playing football manager now that I'm a wee bit older and I'd maybe maybe be able to understand it uh, a little bit more. My my dad used to have a career mode with a team called Malaga, which is a Spanish team. If you didn't know. And uh, it was back in 2002, LFA, I think it was called it, LFA 2002. And he managed to get Malaga, like, win the league every year. Uh, and when I take, when I played it, like, he, sa he gave me, like, a saved copy of it on, I think it was on PlayStation 2. It was, it was on PlayStation 2. Gave me a saved copy of it onto, like, my wee drive that you plugged into your PlayStation 2. And I plugged it in, and then I just, like, 
from going for a team that won the league like 15 years in a row to then going to me, me controlling them and then just wrecking it. <laughs> but I suppose I was young, I was really young, like you, you try and figure out that age, at 2002, I probably didn't start playing it until I was like 2007-ish, um, so 13 years ago that I was 12, <laughs> and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to play a game that's like more aimed towards adults, so I think maybe now I'll, uh, I'll maybe buy it and see how I get on with it, because it's, it's something I really, I, I started a, a career mode for, and uh, for, through my FIFA and I, I, my, my team I support Rangers, uh, it's a Scottish team, Scottish Premier League and uh, it's nothing to do with like, it's just that's that's all the, my whole family's all supported that so it's not something like, it's, I don't know where I'm going with that, I don't know where I'm going with that, my, all my family support it, uh, support Rangers so like, uh, it's one of those things that's just happened uh, naturally and uh, it's good to see us playing some, some good football now, but, um, but it's a, uh, I started a career mode with them and I, I've been having fun with that. Um, it's, it's just it's great to get into the, the managing aspect of a, of a team rather than the actual playing. I don't know if that's maybe just my age starting to rub off. Like I like I like seeing the progression. <laughs> uh, I so well that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I've got more things listed down. Um, oh God, we got beat there. I can't believe that. That's ridiculous. Uh, one of which is how how are you feeling? How, uh, I just want to have a wee bit of engagement. Like how how are you finding this uh, walkthrough? Um, it was more questions aimed towards you. Obviously, I, t I give you a lot of information about me, but I kind of want to know like what what your thoughts and feelings are. Is there anything we could do a wee bit differently? Is there anything in my editing that we could do a wee bit differently? Um, I'm I'm always open to feedback, negative, positive. I mean, make it positive. Try and give me some some uh, key points. <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm keen to learn, and I, I really need to get myself saving up. Like I said in uh, previous episodes, I'm getting a dog, so like for me, money is just not an option right now. Everything's getting funneled through savings and stuff like that to to pay for this dog, which we're picking up on the 20th of this month. It's it's really not that far away. I am super excited. So is Rachel. So uh, hopefully, I can come across that whenever I speak about it. It's, um, the, the one thing that's really negative is like is the price, like the dog prices. I don't know if you, I've been, I've always been a dog lover. I've, I've had dogs since like young height. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying young height, like, like really, really small. Um, I like, grew up with them pretty much uh, with my mum and dad. And then when I moved out, I got my own dog. And then and here we are today. Um, with we we Gus and then now picking up Milo, but the dog prices have just like gradually increased, and then lockdown hit, and then the dog prices just went through the roof. Um, so for context, Gus is a a, a pure I don't know what we call it, a purebred pedigree um, miniature dash hound, and we paid roughly around fifteen thousand pounds for it. Uh, no, fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred pounds, one thousand five hundred fifteen thousand. Jesus, <laughs> I hope that hang win wins cross if I'm paying that amount of money. Uh, so we paid roughly around that for him, and see so now, see so for the same sort of pedigree, uh, same colour as him, uh, the red dash hound. Um, you're talking like well into two and a half, three grand now. It's like almost double, which is absolutely mad. Uh, same with Milo. Milo, we're picking up, and Milo is just over two grand. Uh, for a blue Frenchie, which is actually quite cheap as of today's markets, but that's still quite expensive for a blue a blue Frenchie. Back when I remember when blue Frenchies were uh, becoming popular, uh, but it's one of those things. I absolutely love dogs, and I, I you know if I had a farm, it'd be full of dogs. I'd have I probably love chickens as well. I quite like chickens. I quite like the fact that they give me eggs. <laughs> my granddad used to have chickens. There you go. There's a wee bit of facts for you. Uh, we used to go down to my granddad's, uh, my mum's dad. Uh, my granddad on my mum's side, and he would uh, he would he always had chickens out the back door, always running about. The only problem was he had to lock them up at night because of the foxes. And uh, do you know what? The, the eggs, because they were all free range sort of chickens, like corn. Is it corn fed? I can't remember. What whatever's like the best one. That's what he used to do. And the, the eggs just taste so much better. Like I, I don't know if. Um, if you really care, but I, I just feel like if I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> but I'll probably have chickens just for their eggs, because like, supermarket eggs, are, they're good. Like, we buy the free range ones, and they're just, they still don't have anything on, on the eggs that my granddad, soon they were fresh. Uh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Which, uh, do you know what, on the flip scale, uh, Rachel's been doing really well with keeping herself, she's not vegan, I wouldn't say vegan, because she will eat meat, 
but she's cutting meat out of her diet, which is absolutely fantastic. Like, it's a good thing step towards uh, being more environmentally friendly. I can't really say that for myself. I, I have meat with every single course of my dinner, which is absolutely mad. In fact, not today. I had dairy. <laughs> I, had, I had a wee cheese toasty. And uh, it's one of those things, like, it's going to be so hard for people like me to adjust. Uh, that's if they do adjust, do you know what I mean? But if they want to, like, I, I, I can come in for work and just quickly stick on a chicken wrap. I mean, like something that's dead quick to make. Uh, I suppose you could just replace it with corn chicken, but it's. I don't know. I, I, I need to try it. I need to try it. But I tried corn sausages at the weekend, and do you know what? They were absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm not going to say I, I went I purposely went out and bought them. I didn't. Rachel bought them to try them, and she, she was like, Do you want me to make you something to eat? And I was like, Aye, that's fine. And she made me like eggs and uh, corn sausages. Oh, we've managed to get ourselves into a battle. We'll get, we'll get this one. This is the last one on this floor, I think, anyway. And. Uh, I, I, could, I was none the wiser. It wasn't until I finished my dinner and I was like, these sausages are really good. Like, I, I only ever eat the Richmond stuff, so like, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like Richmond have like a good recipe, and uh, I, it was it was absolutely mad to for her to say that oh, they're the Richmond meat-free ones, and I was like, oh, that's that's madness. Like, I would never have been able to tell the difference. Um, but soon as she said that, I was like. Do you know what? There was a wee bit of a difference. They, were, they tasted slightly different, but like while I was eating it, I didn't. I had no clue. Um, but do you know what? It's, it's, it shows you how far food is coming. Like the processed side of food, uh, trying to make things replicate into taste and like other things. But Rachel, Rachel has like uh, what was it she was having the other day? We, do you know what? We tried dairy-free ice cream. That that's madness. That's absolutely madness. I have an ice cream that doesn't even have dairy in it. Uh, and do you know what? It was quite good. It was the Ben and Jerry's one. I, uh, if you haven't tried it, it's actually it's actually not bad. It was a, it was a caramel. Uh, for me, I bought the caramel. Uh, it was like caramel ice cream with the cookie dough and chocolate and all that through it, and it was good. It was good. Uh, do you know what? I probably wouldn't buy it again, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it was better than the the normal one. But I think it was good good enough to, as a good enough replacement, if that makes sense. So. I think me and Rachel are going to be trying to eat a wee bit more healthy. I'm trying to... Do you know what the worst thing is? I can't even go to the gym now and I feel like I'm... I need to change my diet because my diet right now is based off of me going to the gym and working off all the energy that I'm eating and uh, I'm not going to the gym and I can't... The weather's just terrible. I don't really want to go and run out in the rain. It seems so so terrible for someone that's Scottish, doesn't it? Like, I don't want to go out in the rain. It rains here all the time and I don't even want to go out and run in it. <laughs> oh. But I, I, I just need to change my diet. Um, it's gonna get there in the end. It's one of those things. I, uh, but I'll, I'll not be anytime soon. It'll be, it'll be a very, very slow, <laughs> slow transition. But that's us. We've managed to beat Scientist Taylor, and we got twelve hundred for that. That's fantastic. We've absolutely. I don't even know how much money we've got. We've probably got loads. But if you liked this episode, if you want to, um, want to give us a wee like and uh, a wee subscribe, and if you're watching us through Facebook, a wee like and a follow, and check the check the description out. We've got Patreon links. A uh, Discord, Instagram, I'm going to throw everything down there as per usual now and uh, I'll catch you next one. Bye!